so we have updated the city controller uh, to perform add and delete operation on cities in our previous video but the problem with the current approach is that our controller is tightly bounded with the persistence framework so in case if we want to change the persistence framework it will not be that easy and we will have to make a lot of changes in our controller it is just like if we have built a bike and most of those parts are not detachable then we have to break the existing structure uh, to replace the component in our bike so this is not a good architecture some developers may argue that why we will change the persistence framework at all it is a very sophisticated one and uh, supports so many databases then i bet if you are working on dotnet for a long time you would have gone through so many changes in the data access technologies and after every two years you would have thought of uh, replacing your existing one uh, with a new one so it is not like that you will never need to replace this entity framework ever so this is the current approach uh, we are following we are directly calling entity framework classes in controller and to decouple our controller uh, from entity framework uh, we can implement repository pattern here controller will use the methods exposed by the repository class uh, to perform various CRUD operations in that way we are able to encapsulate the complex query logics into different methods and make our controller more cleaner we can also avoid duplicate query logics in this way for example this same method of repository can be used in multiple controller without writing the underlying query logic again and again and also in case uh, someday we start to face any issue with performance in our application and maybe for optimization purpose we want to get the data from cities directly using a stored procedure or we want to enable cache in this method we will have to change only this method in the repository so in a bigger application where there are hundred of controller using this method we will have to make the changes only at one place to get this optimized in the whole application with a very minimum efforts and using this approach uh, we can divide development work to the different level of skills for example with this decoupling the developers who are expert in working on entity framework can work on repository and the developers who are expert in domain logic can work on controllers without worrying about writing the database query logic so these are few uh, major benefits of using repository pattern real advantage to the repository pattern lies not only in abstracting the data access layer away from the rest of the application but it can be easily swept out with various data stores without changing the api method let's understand how it is easily swappable so up until this point i have been representing the repository as a concrete class the real benefit comes when we have interface that defines the methods uh, we can use in a repository and each repository implements that interface in that way we can map our interface to the implementation uh, repository in startup.cs file in the service section and we can inject the required interface in our controller so our controller is bounded with only interface and at runtime it is decided which concrete uh, repository will be used in our application on the base of startup.cs configuration so anything beyond this dotted line can be swapped easily without changing anything in our controller so lot of theories let's see how we can implement the same in our application next as the repository uh, belongs to the persistence framework uh, we can add these classes here in the data folder add a new folder let's name it repo add a new interface for the city repository and name it i city repository we'll add the method definition here uh, that should be implemented in implementation class let's add a method uh, to get cities uh, it should be a task and uh, it will return a list of cities name it get cities and as it is a returning task that means it will be a asynchronous method add async in the name we are getting error uh, because we need to add the required references press control dot task contains under system dot threading dot task and i enumerable contains in system dot collection dot generic namespace and you already know this city is under web api dot models in our application add a method to add city let's not define this method as asynchronous as this method just add the entity in memory and it is not a time consuming task so no need to define it as an async method 
and it should accept city model as parameter add delete city method it should accept city id as parameter that a user want to delete and finally save method as this method will save the data in database uh, it may take longer time let's make it to return type of tasks uh, to make it asynchronous method and it should return boolean name it save async although we will remove this method from this interface uh, because our repository should not contain a save method instead it should come in unit of work we will see what is unit of work and uh, why we need to use it later in this tutorial but for now let's define this method here only so we have defined methods for all the tasks uh, currently we are performing in our city controller let's add a class that will implement this interface next add a new class name it city repository and it should implement ICT repository to implement this interface we can press control dot here and select this implement interface it will add all the methods uh, defined in interface and we can update these methods as per our requirement let's add a constructor by using code snippet ctor and press tab all these code snippets are same if you are using visual studio as well so inject db context here uh, so that we can perform a various thread operation in this class add a local variable for dc and we can press the control dot and select this create assign field dc uh, to automatically create a local variable and assign it here in constructor so now whatever we had done in controller in our previous video i uh, will have to do here in this repository dc.cities and dot add to add the city and pass city here to delete a city uh, first we need to get the city uh, to be deleted in a var and using the find method we can get the city to be deleted by passing city id in this method that we are receiving from the input parameter and then dc dot cities dot remove and pass this city here to remove the city to get the city list here we need to use await as it is returning task dc dot cities to get the city from the database and as we need to return i enumerable of the cities uh, we need to use to list async to convert it to a list press control dot to add the required namespace where this extension method is available and we are still getting error because we have used await but this method is not marked as async let's make this method async and finally uh, we call dc dot save changes async so that we can save the data of this repository to the database and as mentioned earlier this save changes method should not be the part of repository instead it should be the part of unit of work we will implement unit of work pattern in our next video so we have added all the required method in the repository now we need to register this repository in service uh, so that we can inject the same in our controller let's do the same next So .NET provide three options that we can use uh, to add a service. Uh, one is transient, where a separate instance is created whenever our application need to use any repository. And second one is singleton, uh, where a single instance of repository is generated for the whole life cycle of the application. And the third one is scoped, where a single instance is generated for the complete life cycle of a request. Our repository is dependent on DB context and .NET creates a scoped instance of DB context and the same instance is served throughout the request. That means if some objects are loaded in the DB context, those are available in memory and if we query those objects again, entity framework will not go back to the database to load them in memory. So we will use the same approach to register our repository as well. So add scoped. This is generic method uh, which accepts two generic parameters. In the first one, uh, we will tell what is the interface, and in second parameter, we will pass the implementation of this interface. So now our repository is ready to inject in our application. We will use this interface in our controller uh, to perform the different CRUD operation next. So at present, we are injecting data context here uh, in constructor uh, to interact with data. Now we will inject city repository interface here. 
initialize the field for this parameter just like we have done for data context. Now we can start to remove all the data context references uh, from this controller and we can replace this code with repo.getCities async to get the list of cities from the repository. You can see how simple and clean now this method is. Let me test this code run web API. It's giving error. Seems I have not saved all the files. And now it started successfully. Let's call this city endpoint using the get method. Yep, it is now returning result from a repository. So everything is working fine. Let's replace all the other instances of uh, data context. Let's comment this out as we are not going to use this version of method to add city in our application. Update this method to use repo method. Remove await uh, from here as add city method in the repository is not asynchronous. And replace this with repo dot save async. Here we are using OK and returning the city as created object. But we should return different status code for post action. It should be created instead of OK. And uh, .NET provides a created at root and created at action method uh, that we can use to return a 201 status code uh, with a location header that contains the URL where the created resource is available. We'll see the practical use of this method in our upcoming videos. But for now, just return status code 201 here. And let's test it. Try to add a new city uh, using post method. And it is successful. You can see uh, we got 201 created method this time. Let's update our controller for delete method as well. Delete these two lines. We can just simply call city and pass the ID as parameter here and replace it with async. And let's keep returning the OK200 status code and deleted ID as body response here for successful request. Let me delete this newly added city and change HTTP verb to delete. Yep, we got 200 OK status, uh, which means a record is successfully deleted. So now all the CRUD operations are being done using repository class. We can remove all the references that were tightly bounding this class to the entity framework. Remove this data context we are injecting in constructor. Remove this local variable that uh, we were using to get the data context reference. And remove these namespaces that are no longer in use in this class. So now there is no reference of entity framework here in our controller and we have been successfully able to decouple our entity framework uh, from the controller. And as I have told you that we should not use the save changes method in repository. Instead, we should use unit of work pattern uh, to save the changes we make in the repository. We will understand unit of work in detail in our upcoming lesson. Uh, so see you next video. Stay tuned. Bye bye.